Welcome back to another episode of the Mom Founders Table. And today we are talking about a hot topic that you've heard me mention no less than 485 times. And we are discussing not necessarily work-life balance, but actually another term that I've been using recently with a lot of clients on a lot of interviews and something that I think is really important. And so before we get into creating work-life separation and what that is and why it's important and how it helps to create or maintain work-life balance, I want to kind of address the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is that too many women believe that work-life balance is not possible. I think that even hearing those words the first thing that mothers who are also business owners do is immediately you just let go of the idea of it even being possible for them. And truthfully, this makes me sad. And it makes me sad for a lot of reasons. And it wasn't until a recent conversation that I had that I realized why it was making me so sad and why I've had such a drive to help women understand and create and build and restructure businesses that are anchored in the enjoyment of life and fixing and restructuring the problems in business that take away from that. So I forget how this topic of conversation even came up, but we were discussing just my business and what I do and why I do it. And I had this moment to where I had this thought of like, I really love being able to bring business women back into themselves and back into their homes. And it's not because they have no identity and that they're never home. It's that that identity has been hidden because it's been covered with work and motherhood. And when they are home, they're physically present, but not so much mentally. And I knew that because of my passion for this work and because of the way that I approach this work from a very tactical place of like, actually implementing things into the business structure, operations, offerings, and making sure that the business is set up correctly for the life that you want to live, but also partnering and being a thought partner and being willing to challenge my clients to think differently about what's possible. And so in this conversation, we are we were discussing my why, we were talking about what I do and this thought of like, bringing women kind of like back into themselves and, and back home. And I realize that part of my pain, part of my hurt as a child growing up, it still makes me emotional thinking about this, um, was that my mom was not present. My mom made choices that removed her physically, emotionally, and mentally. And so sometimes she was there, but when she was there, I don't think she was really there. And I'm very grateful to say that my mom and I have a beautiful relationship now and that we have healed and that we have had to communicate and work through a lot of those things. But it was a very difficult relationship and I held a lot of anger and resentment uh, for the way that she wasn't there. And of course, she held a lot of guilt for that. And so I knew this logically about my childhood and about my history, but I didn't know how much that played into my work. I didn't realize that when I would see somebody saying, you know, that like work-life balance wasn't possible and, you know, writing the things about like working when you're an entrepreneur, it's a 24 seven job. And I trade my nine to five for a 24 seven and all of the 
continuous comments about mothers just having to to let go of the idea of like being there for for their children and I I I didn't put it together which is funny to say like considering the awareness that I have of like why that was so triggering for me of why that was that bothered me so much and so when I started doing this work when I started realizing that my approach to business coaching was different I didn't necessarily know why. I just knew that it was what I felt was important. And there was like this huge amount of passion for it. And so all of that being said, I have a deep belief that it is possible to be a present mother, to be a mom that breaks generational trauma, to be a mom that is devoted to being there for her children and for herself and taking care of our own well-being while also fostering what we desire for impact and achievement and growth and being able to make a lot of money to provide a certain lifestyle. I believe that all of these things are possible. The problem is All of these things are a lot of different moving parts. And in order to operate correctly with a lot of different moving parts, we need to have structure. We need to know where is this going and how is it going and have clarity on how it all fits, right? So I think about it's our our lives and our identities and our responsibilities are like a puzzle. And there's many different pieces, but they do all interlock when we have them in the right place. And so not only is work-life balance possible, but I believe it's necessity for happiness and fulfillment. And so today we're talking not necessarily about work-life balance because the reason why we're turned off from work-life balance is because we feel like it's not possible. We feel like there's too much on our plate for it to be possible. So we instantly discount it and say, it's not time right now for that, maybe in the future. And that temporary moment turns out to be years that we continue the same patterns. And so we have to change the way that we are leading We have to change the way that we are structuring our businesses. We have to change our boundaries. We have to change our standards. It's a lot of change, which is why I partner with women to help lead them through that change because it can be overwhelming, especially because it feels like in addition to everything that you have going on. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to start thinking about work-life balance, not as a goal, but as a result. And from what I've found, work-life balance is a result from work-life separation. When we think about work-life balance, we think about two things that are even, even distribution. And this is why we discount it. This is why we say, well, that's not possible because it would be impossible to spend the same amount of hours on yourself, the same amount of hours on your marriage, the same amount of hours with your children, the same amount of hours on your work. Like, (laughs) And then we have to obviously sleep and do other things to be humans. And so That's why it's just like, well, that doesn't work. The math doesn't math. We can't do it. And that's why I say balance needs to be redefined. Balance needs to be defined by us and our personal values. And balance we can choose to see instead of seeing it as everything is evenly distributed, we see it as do we feel balanced? And when we're so focused on what's happening outside of us, we forget to ask ourselves these kind of questions. We forget to say, does this feel good to me? I once had a client said that said to me, my business is working for everybody but me, right? She was making lots of money. She was providing a great lifestyle and experiences for her family. She was providing a great experience for her clients and getting great results that have led to continuous referrals and taking on past capacity in her business. But at what cost? The cost was she was unhappy. She had no time for herself. She wasn't present in those experiences with her family. And so we had to change those things. 
so that she could be. So balance needs to be redefined. I want you to, instead of thinking work-life balance is not possible because of all the things I have on my plate, I want you to think about what sort of separation between all of my responsibilities do I need so that I can feel more balanced? Because it's not about the logical brain saying X amount of hours on each thing. It's not about the amount of time. It's about the quality of that time. 10 minutes with your children without phones in a conversation can fill their cups so deeply, right? One hour with a client can change the trajectory of their lives and their businesses. So it's not about time. We like to blame time because that feels like the easiest thing to blame. But what we need is we need to redefine what balance is. What balance is to us? What does it feel like to us? I am imbalanced and out of balance and out of alignment when I don't sleep enough, when I don't spend you know, one-to-one time with my children, when I notice that I've gone through a whole day and was, you know, didn't feel my best. And so I was buried in my phone instead of in conversation with the people that I love. And so let's make balance more about how we are handling the quality of our situations and circumstances versus time. And so work-life balance, again, is a result And I believe work-life balance is a result of work-life separation. So recently I did a VIP day with a new client. And this is my favorite thing about starting with new clients. And I changed the structure of how I work with clients a couple of years ago because there was just such a lack of depth in my industry. And I wanted to really lead the change and inspire other coaches and consultants to step it up, honestly. And so I put this full in-person day together with my new clients to where I go to, I fly to where they, where they are. We talk all things business, life. I get to know them. They do a full assessment of their business. We start to see the initial changes that need to make. And we're just spending time together with me really getting to know them on a deeper level. And so I recently did these with a client. And one of the things that we did in our time together was created structure. And we created this structure starting with the easiest place to create structure, which is time. So I always do a CEO schedule for my clients because so often when we have a bunch of responsibilities, we keep piling things on and we don't think about when we pile something on, what's going to fall off or where is that thing going to go that we're piling on. And so that's why I love like the tactic of reorganizing a schedule because you can clearly see the time you have available and the responsibilities that you have and what fits and what doesn't. And so we went through her schedule. We went through all of her responsibilities, all the things that she needed to do and allotted time for her to start working out again, her to spend time with her family and actually like have dinner together and not bring her laptop home and time for work and time for all different parts of work, right? So a lot of times if you're somebody, in her case, she sees a lot of patients. And so then all of kind of like the admin backend stuff was falling into family time. And so we rearranged her schedule to accommodate for that. And so after we did her schedule, she was like, I already feel so relieved. Like just this structure of being able to see Here is all the things that I need and want to do, and they all have a space. And so just that bit of creating structure and creating separation between things brings a feeling of balance. And so this is what we have to start doing is we have to start thinking, not just, okay, I want to do this thing, so I'm going to say yes. We have to start thinking about actually allotting you know, the physical version of time, but then also our emotional energy of like, what is our capacity? If you haven't listened to my podcast about uh, tracking capacity and things you need to pay attention to, I highly recommend that because that's a good place to start when you are trying to figure out what to say yes to, what to say no to, how to keep tabs on things so you're not continuing to be overwhelmed. And so, 
it was really beautiful to see like the instant change in her when we implemented separation and structure. And so that's why I really want you to take away from this episode today that work-life balance first is possible, right? It's possible because you're, you get to decide. You get to decide what balance looks like to you. Some people may feel amazing working 40 hours a week and, you know, traveling once a year and, you know, having a day off here and there to just go hang out with their partners. And I, so I think we, we forget that we have the power to define like what that looks like, but so often we're just going based upon what we know before. So there's a lot of unknown of like, what would it look like in fear? What would it look like for me to be balanced, for me to live a life in which I feel balanced? And so I want to give you permission to experiment. I want to give you permission to say, okay, right now I'm working five days. How could I rearrange my schedule to work four and maybe make that fifth day a day that is dedicated to me and my personal care my and my time for myself and the appointments that I keep avoiding scheduling? So there is experimentation to find what works because you really don't know, right? We really don't know what we want because we haven't had it before versus if we're like, okay, here's what I don't want. Right. So take your situation right now and think about, okay, I feel out of balance. I feel out of alignment. Why? Why do you feel that way? What is it that is contributing to that feeling? Are you working too much? Are you not present with your kids? Are you around them physically, but you're not paying attention to what they're saying? Is there a lack of depth or connection in your relationships, be that with your children or with your husband? or your wife, either way, right? Is there something that you feel and what is that thing that feels off? It is easier to try to experiment with what you may want by first starting with what do I not want? What doesn't feel good right now? What are the things that I dread? What are the things that I procrastinate on? What are the things that cause guilt, that cause shame? What are those things? And if you start there and pull those things out, then you say, okay, well, these are the things that need to be changed, right? In our business, you have to look at the services that you're offering. You have to think about how you're offering those services. You have to think about anything in your business that doesn't feel good should be evaluated. Some things are part of it, right? Like nobody wants to answer email. Nobody wants to be in their email inbox. It's just not a fun place to be, but it's a part of it, right? Like there's a necessary path, but what can we change? What do we have control over? Can we lengthen our response time? Why does email feel so bad? Because we're spending too much time in it. What if we only check our emails once or twice a week? You know, there's different things that we have control over in our businesses that we are too stubborn to change, right? And even in this, there has to be separation and structure around what we're doing. So I want you to start there. I want you to think about, okay, in order for me to feel balanced, I need to identify what are the things that make me feel imbalanced? What are the things that make me feel unfulfilled? What are the things that are taking away from me? And after you identify those things, take the opposite of that, or something that moves the needle in the right direction and see what can you control to change that, right? Because there's so much that we can control that feels out of our control, but it's not true. It's just in our minds. So we want to create healthy separation. We want to, yes, we want our children to see that we work hard and that we are devoted to creating something that is bigger than us, But we also don't want them to only see us working. We also want them to see us living. We want them to see that, hey, grandma and grandpa are watching you today, not so I can work, but so I can go spend time with a friend because that is also important to me. So it's important for us to create separation because this helps us to rebuild our identity as women. And it also 
is one of the key things that helps us reduce overwhelm. So if you feel overwhelmed a lot, it's usually from overlap. So if you think about the times where you feel overwhelmed, it's because you have, feel like you have a million things to do, which as mom and business owners is pretty much all the time, right? So if we, instead of looking at, okay, I have a to-do list of a hundred things, instead of having a to-do list of a hundred things, if each of those things that was on your to-do list had a physical time slot in your calendar and you knew exactly when you were doing it, wouldn't that automatically relieve some pressure? right? And so we have to get over any sort of resistance that we have to structure, which I find a lot that some women will kind of rebel against structure of like, well, what if I don't feel like doing that or this? And I'm like, the cool thing about structure is it actually allows you to move things around, right? So if you have a dedicated time block to every responsibility that you have, then when one responsibility falls through or gets bigger, then you get to move things around. So structure is one of the things that creates the freedom and the flexibility that we actually want. And a lot of times we think it's the opposite. We think structure will prohibit us. Structure will confine us. No, what's confining us is our overwhelm and the amount of responsibilities that we have and the inability to look at what is actually on our plate and create the separation in the structure. So we're creating routines for ourselves that fill our cup and giving dedicated space to those things. And then we're looking at all of our responsibilities and we're saying, okay, well, each of these responsibilities that I have is important. And so it needs a space. It needs a dedicated space. And by giving dedicated space to all the things that are important to us, we are filling our emotional bank account. We're filling the people on the other side, the receiving side of those things. And we're making sure that the result of what we are spending our time doing is making us feel balanced. So we're creating healthy work-life separation so that we don't have as much overlap, so that we can be whoever we need to be, whether that's CEO, mom, partner, sister, friend, in that moment. If we're trying to manage being multiple identities, that's going to create overwhelm and then we're going to be reactive. How many times have you been trying to work and you're getting interrupted by your kids and then you yell at them? There are some times where there's going to be overlap. It's just part of it, especially with little kids and they're, they're more dependent on us. I get it, right? My kids are seven, five, and two. I have three little kids. And so it is important to me to create this separation so that the majority of my working hours fall when I do have childcare. And then if there's anything that needs to go outside of that, for whatever reason, I will communicate that to my children. Be that if I'm answering a, a client message in a car, I will say, you know, I need to listen to this message and I need to respond to this message and then we can have a conversation. So there are times where there will be overlap. I'm not saying we can completely prevent that. But I think it's important that we still within those moments try to create clarity and separation. When we have this structure, when we have this separation, when we give ourselves the opportunity to try to be one thing at a time, it feels so much better. And then when we feel better, then we feel more balanced. So hopefully you're seeing kind of how all this flows together about how if we separate things, if we recognize what needs to be separated, if we have awareness of this overwhelm coming from overlap, and if we are giving ourselves the space that we need to take care of ourselves as leaders, not only do we feel better and more balanced, but because there is presence and focus in each of these areas that we're in one at a time, then we're better at it, right? When I'm with my clients, I'm fully with my clients. My do not disturb is on, like I'm there with you, period. When I am with my children, I will not have my phone in certain times, right? And there are times that I do, I'm not a perfect parent, right? But if it is an intentional time of like, okay, this is my time with you, 
and we're going to be together and we're going to do this activity together. We're going to have this conversation. I'm not going to be looking at my phone, right? So there are ways in on a small scale and on a bigger scale that this needs to be incorporated. But the best thing that you can do is start by identifying what doesn't feel good, what is taking away from what you feel your version of balance is, and then start to see from those things that are taking away, okay, what of these things can I change? What do I have control over? What needs to be changed in my house, in my business, in my systems, in my processes, in my communications, so that I can have more separation? When we have this separation and we create dedicated spaces for each of the things that we love and care about, it creates a better version of us. And when we are that better version of us, everybody wins. So I hope this has been helpful for you today. I hope that you are now thinking more about how you can separate your different roles and the different identities and how you can reevaluate your responsibilities, your schedule to make sure that you do have dedicated space for each of these things. So if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. I am so excited because we have actually started the Mom Founders Table community over on Facebook. I would love for you to come and join us. This is a free community and we are having conversations about business, about leadership, about motherhood that are helpful. I am posting content in there that is specifically for mom business owners. So I encourage you to come over and join us. We will post the link to that group in the comments. And thank you for joining me. I love when you guys are giving me feedback, letting me know how you're implementing these things. And I love when you guys screenshot and share and tag the mom founders table on Instagram as well. So thank you guys for listening. Have a great week and I will talk to you next week.